Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and a new video on the Triumph Daytona. In the last video I installed all the new bearings in the swing arm and linkages and today I'm going to put everything back together and have the bike back on its wheels. So let's get into it. So I'm going to start off with installing the steel link. This has two shims on either side which are quite important. Then tighten the bolt and torque it to spec. And just double check everything moves nice and smooth. And now putting the rear shock back in its place. Here's the top shock mount. That's a special bolt, it's not a regular one. And for now I'm just going to put the nut on, but I'm not going to tighten it just yet. We'll get back to that a bit later. Now I'm just using a bungee cord to hold the chain out of the way. And I'm going to go ahead and put the rear swing arm back in its place. It's a bit of a wiggle, but we'll get there in the end. Pretty much there, I'm just trying to line everything up and get the shaft through. Now this threaded insert here is meant to take out all the slack and make sure there's no play. So I'll just thread it in, torque it to spec, then I'm gonna fit the lock ring over it and tighten that up to spec as well. And next I can put the spindle bolt in. So the insert and the lock nut are just in the frame, taking the preload out. And this bolt threads into the shaft, holding everything together. So I'm gonna tighten that up to the correct torque. And just double check everything still moves nice and free. Next I'm gonna install the bolt for the drag link before I forget about it. And tighten that up to spec. And everything still moves nicely. So I've got the end of the swing arm resting on some grease containers about the right level. And now I'm just trying to line up the links and the rear shock and put a bolt through. And once it's all in, I can put the nut on and torque it up to spec. Next I can fix the shock adjuster in its place. And now it's time for the rear hub. I'm just going to use a screwdriver to split the swing arm a bit and then insert the hub in its place and it slides in nicely. Next I can install the caliper mount. And fix it in place with the circlip. Next I can install the bolt that stops it from rotating, and that's a special bolt again. And the whole purpose of this plate is that it moves the caliper in the right position when you adjust the chain. And that bolt just stops the whole plate from rotating, but it allows it to slide back and forth with the chain adjuster. Now this should be part of the video on the brakes, but I'm going to show it here anyway. Before I put the rear shaft in, I'm going to install a new disc, as this is a bit under the minimum thickness. I'm just going to go ahead and loosen all four bolts. Could have been a bit more elegant about that. So I've got the shaft gripped in the vise in some soft jaws, and it's ready for the new disc. I've got all four bolts cleaned up, so there's no Loctite or debris on them. I'm just going to put some fresh Loctite and fit them in. And if you're wondering, no, I didn't clean any oil residue off this disc, simply because the spike is not ready to go on the road just yet. So I'm going to leave that there to stop it from rusting for a bit longer. 
So now I'm just gonna fit the four nuts and tighten them up. So now I'm just going to put some fresh grease on the shaft. And it's ready to be installed. Install it gently so you don't damage any of the shaft seals. And pop it into place. And then I can fit the spacer and the rear sprocket. Now this takes a bit of gentle persuasion with the hammer, but it goes in eventually. Next up we've got a special little flange that's meant to run in the shaft seal and keep all the debris out, so that's quite important. So next up we've got a dome washer. And that's it, I can put the nut on, but I'll tighten that up once I've got the wheel back on the bike. Next I can fit the chain guard. And next up is the brake line, for which Triumph have designed a very nice way to attach it to the chain guard. Next up is another smaller chain guard, or whatever its purpose is. And now the near side foot peg. And fit the rear caliper which has been fully rebuilt, but that's going to be in a different video. And now fit the brake line as well. And the rear wheel is ready to go on. And install all the components on this side. And again another dome washer with the concave side facing in. And I can put the nut on. And now that the bike is back on its wheel, which stops it from rotating, I can go ahead and tighten the nut for the chain sprocket and punch in the little tab to stop it from coming loose. And now go ahead and tighten the nut for the wheel. And this side has a special clip to stop it from coming loose, but I don't have one right now, so I'll get one in the future. And now that the bike is sitting on its wheel and at the correct right height, I can go ahead and tighten the top shock mount. The reason I do that is because the top of the shock seems to have a bush that's meant to flex as the suspension travels up and down. So I want to make sure that I tighten it up in its rest position and it's not always under tension. So I'm going to adjust the chain now even though the bike's weight is not pushing on the wheel. But I'm going to get it roughly in the right position and I'm going to readjust it later when the bike is off the lift. And once I get it pretty close, I'm going to tighten the pinch bolt for the adjuster. And just double check it's still correct. Next I can fit the right side foot peg. And bolt this little guard in place together with the master cylinder. And put the pivot pin through with its clip on the other side. And 
and now it's been a long time and it's in a different video but in order to remove the rear swing arm I had to remove the exhaust and in order to remove the exhaust I had to pull away the radiator so I'm just fitting those back in their place so just running in the nuts for the exhaust flanges now and tightening the motor spec and that's a two stage process and next up I'm fitting the final piece of the exhaust that's held in place with just one bolt next to the passenger foot peg and two springs hold the two parts of the exhaust together and now I can fit the radiator back in its place it's locating with two pins on some rubber bushes on the bottom side and it's held in place with two bolts on top and now for the old cooler which also has a guard to protect it and we're done the rear end is all back together and that's it everything's back together suspensions all done and we've got a few videos left on this bike and we're done with this series so thanks for watching and I'll see you next time